Albert Einstein once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. Well, what is compound interest? Over here on the right, we have an example. Starting out with one dollar, we let it double. 100% compounding interest. And at the end of one period, it's now two dollars. Doubles again at 100% compound interest. At the end of two periods, it's now four dollars. Repeat this process 20 times and you'll have $1,048,576. That's the power of compounding interest. Now, of course, whoever sees 100% compounding interest in the real world? So let's look at a realistic example here. We're going to look at the banking equation. In the banking equation, there are savers that put money into the bank. They're saving money. The bank doesn't let this money just sit in the vaults, though. It turns around and loans it out to borrowers. Let's say that this borrower over here is being charged 6% on a business loan. As he pays this loan back, the bank takes some of the interest and uses it to pay, you know, maybe 1% back to the savers over here. And the rest of the money, after covering the operating costs of the bank, goes to the shareholders who put up the capital to start the bank. This is the way the banking system works. Now let's take a closer look at this 6% loan and see what the bank is really making here. Let's assume this loan was for $10,000 over a four-year period. That means there's 48 monthly payments, and the payments are $234.85 each. Now let's find the real volume of interest that the bank makes on this loan. Well, you say, we already know the 6% right up here. Isn't that the interest? Well, this is the APR interest rate, and it helps us to figure out the other factors on the loan, but by itself, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. And let's see why. To find the real volume of interest, we take the monthly payment, which is $234.85, and we're going to multiply that by 48, which is the number of monthly payments. This tells us the total payments on the loan, $11,320.80. To find the total interest that we pay on this loan, we take the total payments, this 11000 figure right here, and we subtract the original $10,000 of the loan. This tells us that the total interest is $1,320.80. To find the volume of interest rate, we take the total interest and divide it into the total number of payments. We do that right down here, 1320 divided by 11320 and that tells us that the volume of interest is 0.116, or roughly 12%. So the bank is making 12% on this loan, even though the APR, or annual percentage rate, that we see all the time is only 6%. Now let's take a look at another example of volume of interest. In this case, the bank is lending money out on a house, and they're charging an interest rate of 5%. Let's assume this house loan was for $250,000 over a 30-year period. This is a 30-year mortgage that brings the monthly payment of $1,342.05 per month. To find the volume of interest on this loan, we go through the same steps. $1,342.05 a month times the 360 monthly payments gives us the total payments that we'll make on this loan, $483,138. To find the total interest, we take this number and subtract the original amount of the loan, $250,000, and we get $233,138 as the total interest on the loan. To find the volume of interest, we take the total interest here and divide by the total payments. And we get 0.4825. That means roughly 48% volume of interest. Is our math correct on this one? Let's check it here and find out. I'm going to pull up the HP12C calculator and we're going to check our math here. We enter the $250,000 of the mortgage. We're going to put this in as the present value. And the interest rate was 5%. We adjust that for monthly compounding. Enter that in. And the term was 30 years. We adjust that for the number of monthly payments, 360. And then we calculate the payment, $1,342.05. Now we take this payment and multiply by 360. And that gives us the total payments, which in this case are $483,139.46. The extra dollar and 46 cents here comes from the fact that the calculator is using the, the full payment amount instead of rounding off like we did here on the screen. 
Now, to find the total interest, we take this number here and subtract the original principal, $250,000. This tells us that the total interest is $233,139.46. All right, so to find the volume of interest, we take this number and divide by the total payments, $483,139.46. Divide, there's our 48% volume of interest. Our math is correct. So this is volume of interest and this is one of the ways that banks make money. Now let's look at the second way banks make money. Here we're back to our banking equation and uh, here's our 6% loan. Uh, this was a business loan here that we just looked at and as the borrower pays this loan back, he's sending monthly payments that are coming back to the bank. So the bank has some extra money here now. Now if the savers haven't taken out their money over here, the bank can take some of this monthly payment that comes back from on the business loan here, and they can loan it out to someone else. Let's say they're going to loan it to this gentleman at 12% on a credit card. As this gentleman pays his credit card back, well, the bank has even more money here now that it can use. And it can turn around and loan it out to a gentleman that's buying some cars. Maybe they're going to charge him 3%. He pays that loan back. Now the bank has even more money that it could continue loaning out. And let's say it's going to loan it out for a house. Loan repayments are also coming back on this. The bank is continuing to use all this incoming money now in order to pay the savers their 1%. They still don't have to pay the savers 1% because this is the same money that the bank is using over and over again. And then that results in all the more profit for the shareholders of the bank. All this flow of the money, the way the bank is able to use this money over and over again to generate more volume of interest, the more times they can do this, that's called the velocity of money. And that's the second way that a bank makes money. Now, let's go back to Albert Einstein's quote here real quick. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it and he who doesn't pays it. Have you been paying compound interest or are you earning compound interest? If you answered that you've been paying compound interest, don't you think it's about time now that you understand what compound interest is that you ought to be earning some of it? Let's take a look at the banking equation again. Right now in your life, chances are that you're probably a saver in this banking equation and it's more than likely that you're also one of the borrowers over here. Maybe you have out a business loan, maybe you have credit cards, maybe you have cars, what about a house? Maybe you have all of these items and you're paying interest to the bank on these items and the bank is paying you a little bit of interest and giving the profits to the shareholders. So what do you need to do? Well looking at this example here it's quite obvious that you should become the bank also because then you'll be making the profit that the banks are making on you right now.